An investigation is underway in the United States after a cargo ship crashed into a bridge in Baltimore, Maryland, causing it to collapse. Several vehicles were on the bridge at the time. Maryland Governor Wes Moore said the ship reported losing power just before the crash and that it made an emergency call that allowed authorities to limit traffic across the bridge. He added that a preliminary investigation suggested the crash was an accident and there was no evidence and no credible evidence of a terror attack. So just to give you a sense of scale, the Francis Scott Key Bridge was 2.6 kilometres long. Uh, with four lanes. On average, more than 31,000 vehicles crossed it every day. And it's a major part of the road network on the US East, East Coast. So here's a look at how today's events unfolded. The Francis Scott Key Bridge. After the Singapore-flagged container ship smashed into one of its pillars. The collapse of the bridge was caught live by a web broadcast. The ship struck at 1.30 a.m. Within minutes, a major search and rescue operation was underway. The Coast Guard's primary mission right now is search and rescue, looking for any survivors in the water. We're basically searching for everyone that was potentially on the bridge. As you can imagine, it's the middle of the night, you know, you know what type of traffic was there. Uh, how many workers were there? This video, uploaded by a ship tracking service, shows the vessel's path as it went off course and into the bridge. It issued a distress call minutes before the collision. Authorities said workers then stopped cars from crossing the bridge afterwards, saving lives. Experts say the size of the ship simply overwhelmed the support structure. A heavy ship like that will impart a very large load of many thousands of tons when it hits something solid. And the ship has obviously struck the support of the bridge. Uh, not surprisingly, then, the bridge collapses because the support is a very uh, relatively flimsy structure. U.S. President Joe Biden said the disaster was an accident and pledged federal funding to rebuild. It's my intention that federal government will pay for the entire cost of reconstructing that bridge. And I expect to, the Congress to support my effort. This is going to take some time. The people of Baltimore can count on us, though, to stick with them at every step of the way until the port is reopened and the bridge is rebuilt. Meanwhile, people in the region are bracing for the aftermath. The port of Baltimore is key to shipping on the U.S. East Coast, and the collapsed bridge will likely create traffic jams for months or even years to come. Professor Helen Sampson from Cardiff University has studied the shipping industry since 1999. Uh, welcome to DW, uh, Professor. Um, can we try a thought experiment? I'd like you to, to help us understand what's, what probably happened uh, on the bridge. A cargo, so we have a cargo ship like the Dali. It's night. Everything appears to be fine. The harbour pilots have joined the captain on board to guide this massive uh, vessel out of port. And then... Power appears to go out, and you seem to be heading for a bridge support. So what happens next? Oh, the, um, the bridge team would have worked very hard to very quickly try to assess the situation and um, try to obviously prevent the collision with the ship. Uh, adrenaline levels would have been running very high, um, and um, uh, the pilot, the captain, and the bridge team would have all acted together um, to try to um, follow, well, first of all, to try to understand the situation and then to try to follow um, all the emergency procedures to try to avoid the collision, which um, unfortunately appears to um, have been unsuccessful. It looks as if there was very little time between when they may have lost propulsion and um, when they collided with the bridge structure. And obviously that, that loss of power, loss of propulsion is a, is a key thing. How do, you, what, how do you try and avert a, a collision when you have no power? Well, it's obviously an absolutely critical situation. It's very, very dangerous. Um, there are currents and winds, forces that move the vessel when you don't have any control over it yourself. Um, the vessel, I believe, from things that I've read, I believe it was going at about eight knots. Um, which is you know slower than than um, the full speed of the vessel, but it's still you know um, 
provides the vessel with a fair amount of inertia and makes it very slow to to to, to stop or change direction even when you have some control um so um you're into emergency procedures such as dropping anchors i believe the vessel had time to drop um two anchors um from what i've read but unfortunately it 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 was too late to stop it from actually going into the the bridge itself. Um, so the seafarers then would have been into a situation where they're immediate, immediately, obviously, very conscious of the catastrophic damage that's been done. They would be wanting to assess um, the integrity of the hull, to check who on board was safe, to check that everyone on board was safe. I believe that was the case um, on this occasion. Um, to ch to think about the vessel stability. Uh, the cargo stability and, um, you know, to, 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 to start to be concerned about issues around pollution control. Um, so right. all the kinds of um, short term issues that require very immediate attention and action um, uh, would have would have um, taken place. All right. Thank you so much for that, uh, Professor. Professor Helen Sampson from uh, Cardiff University. Straight to Baltimore then, where we find DW correspondent Janelle Dumoulin. Uh, welcome back, Janelle. Um, bring us up to date. Well, Phil, just to describe the scene to you, we're standing at the northern part of the bridge. And uh, if you look closely, you can perhaps see behind me, it's blocked a little bit by the trucks. But behind those trucks, you see the start of the bridge and it stops abruptly in midair, where obviously parts of the bridge have already collapsed into the river. There is a bit of the cargo ship to be seen that is now stuck against the remnants of that bridge. Now, there's obviously going to be a long discussion here on repair and reconstruction. But what is really taking center stage today is that search and rescue operation. They are still looking for those six uh, missing construction workers who were repairing potholes on the bridge at the time of the accident. Not much is yet really known about these uh, these six construction workers. There have been reports that they are employed by a company called Browners Builders, that they are workers from Honduras, from Guatemala, Guatemala and from El Salvador and Mexico. Now, uh, of course, we cannot uh, immediately verify those reports, but suffice to say the search is ongoing. We have also seen some lights being transported to the scene, which tells us that uh, the crews are expected to work late into the night, even though officials would not quite tell us how long they expect these efforts to go on for. And what's being said about the cause of the crash now? Well, by now we have all seen those reports that say that that vessel lost propulsion, lost power, and, and that they had sent a distress signal to Maryland authorities to warn them that a crash was indeed possible. But earlier we heard from the National Transport Safety Board Chair, Jennifer Homendy, and she said that that was also a report that they were looking at very closely, but she did not want to say with absolute 100% certainty that that is what happened. Of course, uh, they are expecting a years-long investigation into this uh, with many more details to emerge. Lots of open questions still here, Phil, but definitely already a big impact on the community. Okay, thanks, Janelle. Janelle Dumoulin in Baltimore. Let's cross over now to Dr. Mohamed Kashani, who is Associate Professor of Structural Mechanics Design and Earthquake Engineering at the University of Southampton in the UK. So tell us, why exactly did so much of the bridge collapse? Um, the, the reason that the bridge could collapse, uh, the first reason is uh, there wasn't any uh, ship bar shipping back barrier in front of the, the, the piers. Uh, and the reason uh, they didn't have it, probably the bridge was uh, uh, relatively old. Uh, I don't know the detail of the of the bridge. Uh, I'm just uh, my my observation is based on the, the videos I've seen, and the cargo bridge was quite heavy. And when you have got that uh, heavy ship impacting, uh, having the collision with the with this pier, so obviously will result in a failure. But the, but the progressive collapse was. Uh, the, that that pier was a single failure point, and uh, that that when when the pier went away, so the part of the deck went down, and that unbalanced force distributed across the the, the whole deck, and essentially resulted in the complete collapse of the whole whole bridge. 
So you, you spoke of a single point of failure there. Does that mean that the bridge had some type of design flaw? No, no, no. It's not a design flaw. It's it, it, it is the way that is uh, the, the 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 bridge but the bridge works. But the the, the problem was uh, the piers were not designed for this impact, and they didn't have any any ship impact barrier. So that that's the problem. So if the, if the if the, the the bridge was to those piers, if they wanted to take that uh, must be, be large, such a large loading coming from the impact, they would survive. But uh, but uh, but they were not designed and they didn't have any shape, uh, ship impact barrier. So that that was the problem. But if you remove a column on a, on a bridge, so obviously the deck will fall down. Now you did mention that the bridge was quite old, and we know it opened in 1977. Do you think the age of the structure played a role in this collapse? Uh, not necessarily. I don't think uh, it had any deterioration because of the or aging problem. Uh, it, 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 uh, the main problem, as I said, it all comes down to do uh, with protection of the bridge pier or uh, against this collision, uh, this collision and imp ship impact, and that was the main, 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 main reason. So. Now we're seeing some pictures now of the bridge um, just there, and we do know that the collapse wreckage has blocked a major port. Do you know if Baltimore is the only place where a bridge collapse could block such a major uh, transitway? No, I mean, th this is quite common. I mean, in the UK, we have got uh, uh, <clears throat> River Thames that has multiple bridges on them or other structures. I mean, the, the place I live in, South Africa, we have got River Eastern coming to the port, which actually see very similar kind of cargo ships that is going in and out of the Southampton port. And, and, and there are a couple of major bridges and they all, they all have this, this protection. Uh, another example that we have, we could clearly see in, 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 uh, in London that actually was involved with the design was London Cable Car for the Olympic. So they are, they, they are not bridges, but uh, the London Cable Car has big, uh, such a large, large towers in, in Thames and the uh, ships are, are, are crossing uh, those towers, but they have a ship impact barrier, and and they are designed just to avoid uh, uh, to isolate essentially the, these foundation and the towers uh, away from the ship. And if ships coming across, they will hit the barriers before even they get close to the piers. All right, I'm afraid we're going to have to leave it there. That was Dr. Mohammed Kashani from the University of Southampton in the UK. Thank you very much for joining us.